Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today let's talk about the ins and outs about needle punching. Punch work has been around for a very long time. It is an old technique that has been made new and fresh. What's new about it is some of the materials we get to use and some of the tools. There's lots of books and lots of kits and lots of different size needles that we're going to be able to punch with. So today I'm going to share with you some basic techniques on how to start punching. There are lots of books that are going to be able to give you patterns and most of the patterns we're able to draw out ourselves. And we can get them to talk about tools and different types of wool. For today's project, I will be using this kit. So it's going to make a pillow. So I have that back of the pillow already prepared for me with the zipper in it. And I'm going to be able to stitch that on to the front once I'm done. And in this case, that pillow has all of the drawings already on for me. And we do have them labeled with the colors that match perfect with my threads. This particular project is using embroidery floss. So I'll be using three strands of embroidery floss. So I'm going to be using a fine needle to accommodate that embroidery floss. The size of the needle needs to accommodate our thread. So if we're using wool, we would use a needle that is a lot bigger than this one. And I'm going to also be using an embroidery hoop. This one's a little bit different than a regular embroidery hoop because it comes with legs. And that way this is going to be able to sit on the table and not on my lap. This particular kit did come with a little test square. And that way I'm going to be able to test my needle so that I know it's going to work well with the floss that came with the kit. So I'm just going to use a small embroidery hoop, put that on and I can give it a test. When we do hoop our projects, it's important that this fabric is very tight. You really need that to be like a drum. That's how my test one is going to look. My larger one will go on this larger hoop. So I'm going to start and do this one flower. The larger base does go underneath and then this is just going to go on top. Then turn it upside down and pull that fabric all the way around and make sure that that is nice and tight. Once I have my little drum, I can turn it over and put my legs on. And the legs just slide on very easily. If you don't want legs, you can use the hoop just the way it is. We now need a punch tool. The one I am going to be using is considered an embroidery one. And if we turn it over, it will actually tell us what thread or wool we need to use. So it's telling me to use embroidery thread and that's what my kit is having. The appearance of the punch needle will vary. We can get wooden ones, long thin ones, ones with nice big knobs on them, or this interchangeable one. And what we're looking at is a tool with a long thin needle on the end. That needle is like a straw. So it goes all the way in right to that back side. And that means the thread's going to be able to go all the way through, coming right out of this end. Now to get that thread in, we're going to need some kind of a tool. A long threader will go right in the end of that needle. And it's going to come out the other side. Now this is going to be the same for large or thin thread. We need to get whatever wool or thread we're using right to the end. So we're going to be able to put our fibers into this little opening. And in my case, I'm using three threads of that floss. So I'm going to put that thread through that loop and then pull the end of the thread right through and it's going to come right out that end. We can then take that off. We're going to see that thread come out of the end. And then we're going to see a little eye in the end of the needle. And that needle is on a wedge. There's only one way now to be able to thread that. And we're going to take that threader again, put it through that eye. 
slip that thread back into the threader and we're going to be able to pull that and it's going to go right through that eye. So we have the thread coming through that channel and then up through that eye. You can see where that thread is going to run through. So we're going to have this long end coming out of that back side. Now the needle does have a back and a front. When we're looking at the thread, this tail is considered the back side. That open wedge is the front. And we are always going to stitch with this thread following behind the needle. When we're stitching, the thread always has to come from behind. So when you punch in, and I'm going to be going in this direction, I need the thread coming from behind. I'm going to lift up and punch all the way back down. So I'm going to go forward, and if I want to change directions, I can either change the hoop direction or change that needle direction. And then this case, it does have a little bit of a fin at the top, and that's the direction that I'm going to go in. When I lift up the needle, I'm going to turn so that I can come back. So the thread will be following now behind. So it doesn't matter what direction you go in, you need to always have that needle facing forward so the thread is always following behind. The other thing is we need to punch this needle all the way to the stopper. So I'm going to lift up and I don't want to go in partially I need to go in all the way. Another thing is we do not want to lift up too far. See how I have this extra loopy piece? If I go back even in the right direction, it gives me an extra loop on the front and that is going to cause the stitches to skip. If that happens, we just need to take that out and from the end Pull that thread until you have that tight end. Now go in. So when we lift up the tool, the idea is to lift it up ever so slightly. So it's almost like dragging its heel along the surface. So I'm going to pick it up and I'm just dr almost dragging it and down. I'm going to lift up, almost drag it and down. And you can see that that thread tail is behind and that wedge is in the front. Another thing to help us prevent skip stitches is the looseness of this thread. This thread really does need to be free flowing. We want to have that thread on the back of our hand so that it's not caught up. If we get the thread like this, it has a tendency to get caught up in our hand and it's going to cause stitches to be skipped. And then we're just going to be able to turn and keep going. So let's move to the big project. I'm going to be starting with color number seven. So I'm going to take that seven, divide it up, divide my floss into half. My floss has six threads, so I'm going to divide it in half because I only need to use three at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is poke into a corner Pull that loose thread into the back side. Make sure my needle is pointing in the right direction. It's loose. Now I get to go. And it really is as simple as lifting up, poke down, lift up, poke down. We need to make sure we go all the way down, lift up, poke down. After a while, get really quick at it. We're just lifting and going straight down. The thread's coming from behind and that little wedge is up at the top. I'm going to take little stitches because my thread is thin. If I had wool, I could do bigger stitches. When I come to this end, I cannot go back because then my thread is going in the wrong direction so I can change my hoop direction. So I'm going to continue going down. The thread is always going to be from behind. 
And when we turn this over, we're going to have all of these little loops along the bottom. And that is what we're looking for. And there's that needle inside, ready for its next stitch. And if you happen to pull some stitches out, that's fine. Just pull that back thread, tighten it up, and put it back in, and continue. It's very important that we have that fabric nice and tight, and that's going to hold the stitches better. If you feel your fabric is loosening, be sure to tighten it. I'm going to continue all the way around. You can see that my thread is somewhere in this needle, and I'm just going to keep going. And when I come to the end of my thread, the end will either be inside or up at the top. Respool and keep going. So I'm going to be filling these stitches in. So I have the first color done. Now I'm going to be able to go in with the darker color and color in the veins. So I'm just going to be able to continue this and do color by color. And when we look at the back, we have all of those beautiful little loops. One of the real fun things about needle punch is there's no right or wrong side. This is a very smooth side. And this was the side we were working from. This can be the right side, or the back can be the right side. But there's not one side that's correct. The side that you like is the correct side. So keeping that in mind, you're going to be able to choose where your thread ends are going to be. This one, I pulled those thread ends into the back side. So I will be able to trim them off for the back. And that will be very helpful if you are going to have this smooth as the front side. The blue, I have those thread tails up at the working side, so I have no tails on the underside. You can really see those loops on that back side. You can also mix up the textures. So this is the loopy side, and there's that top side that we were working on. When you're working with a thicker wool, it does fill in that flat side a lot better than if you're using embroidery thread. Here's an example where we have that flat side and the loops, so it does give us some extra texture. And that extra texture can be very helpful depending on what we're doing. We have flat and loops. As we work along, we will need to do second and third hoopings. So the hooping area is going to go over top of the needlework that we have already done. So this area we need to be a little bit gentle with so that we don't take out our stitches. I like to put just an extra piece of cloth over that and that way the hoop is not catching it. You can see where that little extra piece of fabric has protected those stitches. For the pillow, I am going to choose the loopy stitches to be the front. So I'm working on the back, so I will be having my threads start from that back side, which means your pattern is going to be reversed. So all of the punching is done. And this is that short side, which in my case, I'm going to make that the wrong side. So when I turn it over, those are those beautiful loops on what will be my front. When you do this, you will have little threads poking out from either side. We're going to be able to trim those off. Now, if this is just a wall hanging, you can trim them off, hoop them, and you're done. But I am making this into a pillow, so I do want to secure the back, or my back, which will be this flat side. So before I do any trimming on the front, I'm going to put a little bit of a glue on top of this back. I would recommend some kind of a permanent glue for fabric. So we can use that directly, but I like to water it down a bit because I don't need a lot of glue on the back, just enough to hold it. So I'm just going to lightly glue all of those pieces. I don't need the glue to go through to the front. I just need it to go right along the back. Once that glue is dry, I'm going to be able to go in and trim off some of these larger pieces that, well, just don't belong. 
So I'm going to give it a little bit of a haircut just to get rid of those little straggling pieces. With all those threads trimmed off, it has a beautiful look, not only on the loopy side, but on that flat side. Now this can be done with wools, acrylics, all different size threads. You are just going to need to have a needle that is appropriate for your thread. Regardless if we're doing a thick punch or a thin punch, it is a fun project to do and it gives us quite a unique look. I do hope that helps with the ins and outs and the basics of needle punching. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and, well, come on back. Let's see what we're talking about next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.